So also, I, I want to say hi to everyone that is going to see this in the future. We're recording this so that it can be shared with others that for whatever reason could not join us today, which actually, is, as I said, is very common being such a global school. Uh, let me share my screen now. Uh, so uh, for us, it's very important to identify ourselves as a school that is really ready for change. Uh, our school is not fixed. We don't have, a, let's say, uh, uh, the, the wish of, of uh, uh, remaining in multiple, in, in, immobile or kind of fix on, on our own ideas, but rather we are embracing change and innovation and we want to anticipate what the future of architecture is. That's why our logo expresses this uh, permanent transformation and we don't have a, a logo. We have sort of a, an evolving way of identifying ourselves. Uh, the AD is actually the most experimental part of the school. It's the, pro the program that, that allows itself to go deep into research and also to understand how design is an opportunity to reinvent the world. We're here in Avery Hall. Avery Hall is a historical building, but uh, actually for, for us, it, it feels very much the opposite, very lively, dense, full of ideas of people, but also a container of the knowledge uh, that architecture in its whole diversity, it's produced and accumulated in the, in the last centuries. And that's why we are literally standing on the Avery Library which is the, the library of reference in the world for architecture. So, so, so for you, this, is, this means that, that you're uh, automatically connected to this knowledge and that uh, everything that will happen during the time that you're here and beyond uh, in the future as an alumni of the, of the school is very much uh, constituted by the, and connected by all this diversity of experiments in architecture and knowledge and architecture that the Avery Library captures. Our pedagogies are designed to provide you an ecosystem where you can explore how architecture is part of the most important tensions that are reshaping the world, societies, and ecosystems. Climate, equity, data, and technology, these are basically the pillars of our, of our pedagogy. And we basically do it not as a form of instruction, but rather providing you a very complex ecosystem of possibilities where you can choose and navigate how you want to track your expertise. And that's something that, of course, it's, uh, uh, requires a lot of uh, attention on our end, but that translates into basically uh, making sure that everything that is happening in the world, uh, climate crisis, environmental crisis, social tensions, new ideas of how we work together, the way bodies are extended in technologies, new ways of understanding nature as something that is architectural even the notion of human as something that is designed and constructed and the communities that, that are produced to this process, uh, social media, technology, data, uh, AI, uh, and also new forms of understanding gender, uh, ecology, not as a problem, but rather like the paradigm in which we operate, but also the risks societies are facing now and the way architecture uh, minimizes, reduce, adapts to it. It's basically what, what the context for our architecture is. Uh, but we do this through structure and design. Uh, and we have eight tracks, eight lines of work, eight tensions that are accumulating our efforts and that allowed you actually to, to find uh, people that can help you uh, getting deep into many of the uh, sensitivities and questions that you already bring to the school. So we're not expecting you to come as an empty, let's say person uh, that we will Instruct, but actually we're very interested on your personal stories, what is important for you, your cultures, your sensitivities. And we, we want to make sure that whatever is important for you, you can find in our school lines of work that can help you grow and develop 
uh, your already uh, existing concerns and, and abilities and sensitivities and, and inclinations. The first of this track is the environmental engagement, which of course, it's not unique. There's many, many ways uh, of understanding how architecture helps producing environmental engagement. And we actually want to, to map all of them and to see how different they are uh, to design, to uh, research, to, to information, to lectures, seminars. The second is how to turn technologies accountable. And that's of course a crucial uh, uh, um, discussion and endeavor at the time that of course we're seeing very rapidly uh, machine intelligence uh, uh, overpassing the capacity of human intelligence. And so this question of how we turn accountable our technologies, how we make social media space for democracy, how we understand the, the way technological systems can empower individuals and communities and ecosystems, is also a line of work that how could we not be paying attention to? Uh, the third one is the rearticulation of the societal. This is crucial. We, we believe that one of the key capacities of architecture is to operate socially. And by this, I don't mean uh, uh, just uh, be, uh, let's say, supportive of the disfranchise, but also how the actual societal uh, alliances are produced at all different levels in all different situations. So how architecture works as a mediator, as a facilitator, as an assemblage, as society itself, are uh, part of long traditions that uh, we, can, we can build on. And that is of course a crucial part of also what architecture is now and the tensions of evolution, how it is going to be reinvented in the future. We want you to have the tools to do that and to immediately be at the uh, uh, highest level in that discussion. There's a totally different way to approach materiality now. In the past, materials were selected in architecture mostly through their aesthetics or, or capacities. But now the discussion is much more complex. It's about its long uh, span, like lifespan, uh, the, the precedents, the, what are the labors that are uh, included in its production, mobilization, installation, but also what is the future of materiality uh, once placed in a building, how materiality connects to bodies and environments at the time that is uh, already mobilized as part of a building. So, so all these very complex questions require also research, laboratories, uh, uh, new theories, conceptualizations, but also design, forms of design. And that's what we do here. We bring all these so that you have the capacity to very rapidly operate such experts on material cyclabilities. The fifth line and track of work is interspecies relationships. In the past, architecture has been promoting anthropocentrism, but of course that came to an end. We know now that our future is uh, intrinsically uh, linked to the future of many other species. And actually biodiversity became a way for humans to work on their, uh, 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 the possibility of their existence. We actually know now that there's no autonomy of the human body. Uh, the human body is 70% uh, composed by other species. So we basically are ecosystems. And the way we negotiate our relationship with other species is actually a, a big focus of architecture, of experimental and avant-garde architecture now that we definitely uh, have a voice on. And we want also you to be empowered by, by, by being able and becoming experts on how to, to do that. The sixth track and line of work and tension for evolution of architecture, societies, ecosystems is the connection and the articulation of the online with the offline. How could we not address this question? Uh, a big part of our life is now delegated to uh, uh, automatized systems and to IA systems and to digital systems. And we want to make sure that we are not working with a notion of architecture of the 19th century, but that we immediately install everyone's practices and research and knowledge uh, in what is happening right now. And we will see that we have a number of faculty that are working on these issues and that you, and you, those of you that are interested in this, you will find the opportunity to, to, to go deep into this. The seventh uh, track and line of work is 
an acting identity. And that has to do with the decolonization of our practices uh, uh, and also discussions about racialization and racism across the world, but also uh, uh, non-binary uh, gender identities, gender tensions, feminism, queerness, and radical forms of echo and queer uh, 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 ecology. And this is, of course, a very, very uh, intensive uh, field of work now and debate, but also a very intensive field for design. And, and we want to make sure that that everyone in the in the in the program uh, is uh, uh, familiar with how to and has the tools and is empowered to to navigate these discussions and these uh, possibilities for architecture. Um, even you know if uh, you might at the end move in other tracks. And the last one is geopolitics in the making. Architecture is operating across scales. It's no longer something that operates only at the scale of, of the building, but the buildings, by looking at buildings, by doing buildings, we also expand uh, in the tiny scale of bacteria and the large scales of geopolitics. And that's something that we, we've seen through infrastructures, through the expansion of cities, through the architectural devices that are designed to, to address specific geopolitical questions. Uh, and, and of course, we want to make sure that this is, um, again, something that we bring to, this, to the program so that you, many of you have the possibility of explore and become experts on this. I must say that this is basically uh, the way we do this is that everyone in the first semester uh, becomes very familiar with all these tools these ways of doing mobilizing design, these ways of researching, these very diverse ways of addressing uh, architectural practices so that everyone in the first semester become actually an expert on, on all these lines of work. But then you start deciding how you want to uh, design your trajectory in the program and what is the, the, the professional definition that or academic definition that you want to have when you graduate and you will start choosing how to mix, how to take pieces of these tracks and how to actually uh, be uh, shaping your own uh, expertise. Ultimately, what we're basically, uh, what this program stands for is to understand but the, that when we see buildings like this, when we see an architectural setting like this in New York, uh, it's full of ideas, it's full of conflicts, it's full of, disputes and arenas where different notions of the future are being experimented. And this is crucial. We want to make sure that we don't approach architecture in a superficial way, but rather that we mobilize the entire power of design, that we really are able and prepared and experts on mobilizing the power of design to transform the future and to transform it in a way that it help us address the fundamental questions that are shaping the times we live and that will define what the future of humanity uh, will be in the next decades. We do it through a very simple structure, uh, simple so that you can use it easily and that you can basically uh, make it yours. The first semester is the semester that we actually make sure it's very intense, so even before you come here, you will get already some text that we want you to read and uh, to participate in some of the first week uh, discussions and, and experiments. And, and, but, that, but it's also very fun, I must say, and everyone remembers this first semester as a, a moment of opening and, and ideas and, and meeting your, your peers and, and, and discuss with, with them uh, lively but also imagination, fun. Uh, the, the, but the, basically this is the moment that the class comes together. We start with a multicultural uh, welcoming where everyone is really uh, celebrated and we, we want to make sure that we all know what is unique about each of you. We actually even celebrate the way each one express themselves and what are your, your languages, your idioms, your references, what is important, either very elevated or very simple, what is that that each of us like, and it's an opportunity to, to know each other from what makes us different. 
Uh, we, we, we highly believe in the uniqueness of everyone and we want to preserve that. Uh, we have an advanced architectural design studio, transcolarities and arguments, and these are courses that are taken by transcolarities and arguments by the entire class, so it becomes an opportunity to know each other. And then we have two semesters, the, sem the fall semester and the spring semester that are also very intense, each of them very different, where you have the capacity to choose among a large pool of courses. Let's explain a little bit better the, the first semester. The first semester, the, the most intense uh, course is the Advanced Architectural Design Studios. You will have to choose among a pool of 10 studios, very different. Uh, these lines of work that I was presenting before, they are represented in the studios. So you will see that, for instance, some of you will want to work with uh, Nerea Calvillo on the uh, development of interspecies relationships to design. Others, of, others will work with Marco Ferrari and Liz Chuk on projects that are at the scale of architecture, at the scale of buildings, operating climatically and intervening climatic uh, crisis. Uh, others will want to work with, with Elias and Joseph Anastas on the, the way stone, the carving of stone is actually a form of, of communal empowerment in, in the Middle East. Uh, some of you will want to work with Dan Wood, uh, revisiting the way architectural typologies and towers, uh, buildings that are mixing uses become an opportunity to reinvent the way society is articulated. Others will want to work with other people like looking at the way the existing materiality of architecture can be mobilized. And, but we have basically 10 very different studios, all of them incredibly intense, all of them very devoted to connect design uh, with research as an opportunity to, to, to turn the studio laboratory with notions, future notions for architectural practices are, are invented by each of you. Uh, some of these studios will be working in groups, some will be working, in, uh, allowing or, or promoting students to work individually, but you will basically be in the lottery, you will get in advance all the syllabi of these studios, and the first day of classes, you will go to a lottery, uh, you will see a, a thorough presentation of each of the studios, and then you will uh, indicate what are your preferences, what's your first option, your second option, and through a, a student-run process that is run by the uh, uh, representatives of the previous AED class, you basically will be assigned to one of your top uh, options. And, and that is that you'll see it's very horizontal. The studios have from six to 12 students and one or two instructors and a teaching uh, uh, assistant. So basically it's a large team of faculty with a small number of students so that there's the possibility for you to develop a very strong relationship with your peers and with your instructor to work together to do something that is uh, very sophisticated, very needed, very innovative, and at the same time that represents what is important for you and gives you an opportunity to grow and, and sharp uh, the kind of architects that you want to be. Then we have a second course that is Transcolarities. Transcolarities is uh, a course that is composed by two parts. Uh, it's uh, one part is a workshop in small groups with instructors that are experts on research and that will help you basically uh, get very rapidly uh, all the tools that you need to do high academic research. You will be introduced, of course, in how to do searches, bibliographical work, also experimental research, use of media, but also you will be trained on academic writing, academic referring, the way to art to argue and how to build arguments and to provide evidences for it. So this, this part is very much helping you to very rapidly get to the level of high academic work. And, and then the second part is a discussion that I myself, together with Jean-Paul Jean Jean Polman uh, curate, where we basically discuss uh, in the course of this semester more than 300 cases of architecture, and we do it in detail. To, its, to a huge detail. Uh, and we, we basically, uh, we, this is a huge opportunity for you to expand your architectural knowledge by, by knowing very well uh, the most important architectural uh, 
uh, designs of the last decades, the ones that are shaping all the contemporary discussions. And this is really fun. We do that on Fridays in the afternoon. And normally people go for drinks afterwards. So it's it's very, very, uh, very, I would say, heated discussions about uh, the, the most important projects of the last decade. So it's, it's really fun, but at the same time, very, very helpful. Then we have arguments. Arguments is, is very intense as well. Oh, sorry, I must say that for transcalitis, we have amazing people coming. We have Keller Easterlin, Lydia Calipoliti, uh, Mark Suramaki, uh, people that have done, you know, let me show you some of the books, for instance. Uh, Mark Suramaki will be working with us, looking at, he, he just launched this amazing book, and it's, it's looking at the way materiality is now being applied massively to uh, experimental projects across the world. And we will be basically uh, looking at all the different lines to, to understand materiality. The, Lydia Calipoliti is the expert on, on ecological systems. And again, we will be looking from the 1970s to, to nowadays, the whole um, high, highest experimentally, uh, let's say innovative buildings uh, in, the, in, in, in the terrain of ecology beyond the culture of sustainability, of course, and getting much more into the, 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 the whole ambition of, of ecological thinking. We also have Keller Easterlin that is coming to also work with us, analyzing the way uh, uh, structures of market and capitalism and mobility, the forces of globalization have also been experimented through architecture in the last decades. So what I try to say is that change clarities is really the moment for you to understand how architectural design in the last decades, it's been, uh, advancing the possibilities that now we, we can anticipate for the future. Arguments is very different. Arguments is, uh, is also composed by a part that is, uh, um, is a workshop in smaller groups. And it's really, uh, and then a, a, a lecture with the entire class where we discuss together with, with each week with a different uh, visitor or guest uh, speaker. And we basically invite the people that have produced the most important um, uh, theories and, and practices on architecture for, of the last two years, very recent. And we, half of them are architects, half of them are people that were from other fields discussing architecture, working with architecture. The workshop is very important because it's a workshop on interrogation, how to pose questions, how to, how to basically destabilize, destabilize knowledge? How do we find the cracks that allowed us to innovate in existing, uh, 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 I would say ontological systems? And, and that we do in a very fun way also. Uh, in the morning, you basically meet with your instructors in small groups and you prepare your questions. Prior to these meetings, you have read all of you uh, a text that is, or a film or an exhibition, you have consulted, studied, uh, something that was previously uh, sent by the, by the speaker. And then we meet all together in the in, in Wood Auditorium. And we have a, a very intense conversation with the speaker. We also have lunch there. So it's really fun because it's actually like a very active two hour meeting uh, where we really interrogate the speaker and find where the potential and the cracks of, of the discourse is hard. And it's, it's very, very much also building the connection of the entire class to these discussions. What we basically make sure is that all these lines of inquiry, of these tensions that I was referring to, the environmental engagement, the decolonizing center, and architectural accountable, materiality, uh, and the cyclabilities of materiality, architectural uh, uh, as the articulation of the societal, the connections of the online, of the offline, the interspecies relationship, all these are basically uh, dealt with in all these different courses. So each course is incredibly different to each other, but they all have the, they're all mobilizing these lines of work, inquire and innovation. So what is great is that by the end of the semester, both each of you becomes an expert on all these different topics, but also as a class, you have gained 
a culture of its own that, that allows you to channel all your uniqueness and your specific sensitivities, individual sensitivities, your culture, your previous knowledge, but also connected with discussions that are uh, shaping the identity and the capacity to work together of your, of your cohort. Um, the advanced design studios are very lively. They, you are given for those that, that are far and could not be with us uh, in the last days. Uh, the studios are, you're given a, a place in a studio. Each group is actually together in one of these long tables. And then you have places where you can meet as you see there. It's always very lively and very intense, very densely populated. Uh, and it's really fun. I must say that you spend a big part of your time here. You have the opportunity to know each other very soon. You, you know, you have lunch here if you want. You can, you know, it's it's really uh, uh, the place where where the you know everything clicks and 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 you work together with the rest. Density is very important, so it's inevitable to know everyone and to get to be friends with many many of your peers. And but also this is it is here when where you meet often with your instructors. Uh, and, and of course, sometimes you have pinups and there's a, a room that is where you're meeting and that, but so each group meets in, in different rooms, but, uh, but you know, the life of the studio is something that is incredibly beautiful. It of course expands into other facilities. This is for instance, our making studio that is also a place that I, I think is, is part of the student life in a very intense way. And also this is a place that offers jobs. So if, if you have the training to use this, or you can, I mean, the first day that you arrive, you will be offered in the orientation, the possibility of getting training. I would encourage you to do that as soon as possible so that you can fully use the, the making studio. And even if you want to get the job there, you, you're prepared for that. And you can write to the director even now, if, you, if, you, if anyone wants to be considered for jobs, just write now for this. Uh, we also work across campus and uh, across the city and globally with experts. You will see that each studio is already producing connections with many experts that help you uh, take further whatever research you're doing in the aim of the, of the studios. And what is very important is that whatever you do, it's at the center. So we really are a student-centered school and we really want to know what is that that is important for you and what is that that your work is uh, anticipating. We are very, very much uh, paying attention to all you say, to all you do, because we, we know that the future of our world is, is, resides there. And the way we do it is that you permanently present your work in front of a large community of faculty, experts, uh, visitors, we have, good discussions where basically you get uh, to understand what else, what's the potential of the work that you're doing in conversation by, by explaining yourself and by, by responding to questions and by getting comments from many others. We want to make sure that you have everything that is needed to develop your work. This is a presentation of a student that produced this huge amount of things. And, and as you present, we're ready to have a, a bunch of incredibly clever people uh, reacting, helping you, taking it farther, clarifying what you're doing, getting the, the tools that you need. And that's what we do all the time. In arguments, we have, as I said, we bring the people like Jack Halberstam, former Fantasma, Claire Easterlin, uh, Laura Poitras, and Henry Molke, basically to have discussions. You, basic, you, you meet in the morning, as I said, in groups like the one in this photograph, there will be a, like this to discuss the, the let us, uh, groups like this, you have meetings like this when you will be discussing together what, how to interrogate the speaker and then the speaker comes and we have these very fun discussions. Uh, Transcolarity is this course that is also called Arenas of Design. It's also crucial because it's the moment in which you take the mic and have the opportunity together as a class uh, in conversation with me, with uh, Barjan Polman, with Keller Easter, with Lydia Calipoliti, with uh, Marshall Mackey, to interrogate architecture. And with this, I mean close environments. So the, you know, all these very, very different architectural traditions that have been shaping architectural discourse and design in the last decades, we will be interrogating in detail in this, in this uh, two transcolarities. The second and the third semester are very exciting. It's the moment that 
is very different. Whereas the summer feels very intimate. You take over the school, you're the owners of the entire building. The fall is full of other people, which is actually great. And it's the moment that you melt in the studios. This also means that in the fall, you have 20 studios from which you decide what are your first, second options. And, and then you also have, the, and you are in the studios mixed with people of the MR program. So that's a great opportunity because normally the, the students uh, bring all this critical knowledge that has been nurtured through the summer. And that's a great moment for also, uh, let's say, discussing it with the MR students that, that have been in the school for two years already. So they can also help you navigate the school, the university, the city in a very intense way. And then you have a large pool of courses on history and theory and uh, technology and representation courses that you can take. You have, you're required to take one advanced studio, one history and theory elective, and one visual technology electives, but that's only the minimum. And we encourage you, you know, the program allows you to take more courses without paying tuition. There's a limit of 19 points, right? Uh, CLC that you can take without paying tuition, meaning that you can take more courses and I would encourage everyone to take as many as possible because it's, it's a great opportunity to make the, best of the huge pool of possibilities that is, is here in Colombia. You can also take courses across the campus. Uh, sorry, the, before we get here, uh, and the spring is very exciting. It's the, the moment that we travel. So you will be traveling with, the, with your studio and doing field work, engaging with communities across the world and doing a research that would uh, allow you to elevate your, the global impact of your, of your work. This is also a very important moment is when you're completing your portfolio. So th this is crucial. And of course we help on that and the school pays for this term. We have a very large uh, and very impressive pool of faculty. I mean, we have probably a Stephen Hall, Bernard Schumi, Kenneth Franton, he's not teaching, but he's uh, still here. And there's uh, all these different generations of uh, very important uh, voices of the, in the field of architecture that have shaped actually what we think architecture is now and that are David Benjamin in, in, in amazing work on ecology, Hilary Sample with Mosh, uh, Juan Herreros with all these corrections of typologies, Gordon Keeping with uh, th thinking of the next steps of, of parametricism, Lola Benalon, the director of the Natural Material Lab, inventing materials that are alive, that they contain life themselves. And that's a laboratory that I encourage you to be part of and be connected with. It's very easy. But basically the work we do is work that it's not replicating the architecture that we know, but rather using complex discourse and technology to empower yourself as designers to do projects that other people could never do. This is for instance, a project that is using machine learning uh, to identify components that are already existing in buildings in New York and that could be relocated to increase the overall sustainability and energy efficiency of the city. This of course is something that could not have happened 10 years ago and that is at the, at the avant-garde of what can be done to the sensitivities and conflicts that we're facing now with intelligence, with design. Or for instance, this is a word developed by, again, by AD students that it's rethinking the way different species relate to each other from human stomach to, to the city, uh, to insects, bacteria, animals, so that basically the notion of waste can be removed and what is waste for one species, what, what becomes toxic for humans becomes the habitat of other species. And, and that is the way to, to mobilize nature in a city like New York uh, to, uh, uh, to, to basically eliminate its, its impact by redefining the way humans relate to others. And this is, for instance, work that was done in the studio uh, of Bernard Schumi studio. We have all these amazing people like Bernard that uh, it's, uh, it's shaped the way architecture is uh, unfolded in last decades. Of course, now it's 40 years since the construction of, of La Villette Park in Paris that changed the future of architecture radically. And these are projects that his students are doing to, uh, to mobilize architecture as an agent for climate uh, mitigation. Uh, or this is, for instance, Michael Bell Studio. Michael Bell is, of course, the, the expert and author of all these different books on materials, uh, on, on steel, on glass. You probably know these books are the reference for material studies in architecture. 
And he's now thinking, for instance, of the way machine learning can transform uh, daily life and actually cater to human agendas. Uh, this is, for instance, a studio uh, uh, with Amanda Williams and Ife Wannable that is looking at the, in the tools of interior design as an opportunity to uh, confront uh, structural racism. And that's something that was uh, Amanda Williams, of course, the, the, the brilliant artist and, and top artist, the top world artist, and that working with Ife Wannable, that, that was a very, very unique studio also. Well, for instance, this studio, this work by Farah Alhuri, uh, an AED graduate now, that uh, uh, was very concerned. She's originally from Iraq and a, a, a forced migrant uh, uh, to Canada and now to the US, and that uh, she worked with the develop an architecture and infrastructure that would allow to reclaim uh, uh, terrains that were uh, polluted and uh, so, so this is again like a way to mobilize architecture. So needed, there's so much need, resources, uh, appetite, commissions for for works like this, and that we. But also, it, it definitely requires very advanced architectural development. And across the world, doing research, uh, studies, associations, and that's something that, as I said, the school funds. We have a specific endowment, uh, the Kini endowment, to work with this. Uh, and and there's also opportunity for you to to apply for for specific research for grants for a specific research that you want to do that also involves traveling, but this is something that we do all that everyone does all of you will be asked to do this in the in the spring of 2024. Visual studies are will probably I mean I I don't want to be pretentious but I think that we have probably the best. Uh, team working with with visuals and representation led by Laura Kurgan. Um, the 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 there's we have a lab that is specifically working on this. This is a work, for instance, that is developing GSAP and that was presented at the Venice Biennial. The technology sequence is uh, run by Lola Benalon and it's but it has a large pool of professors that are experts on climate, on materials, on of interspecies relationship. Many of the things that I already mentioned. Uh, and th this is, we're incredibly strong here. There's so many um, amazing works that every year are developed by our students and also that support the way you can work in other courses and, and come up with, with ideas that are addressing very difficult, also critical questions of our times. And, and, and we have also tools for you to self-educate. I mean, we have workshops where you can get familiar with software, but also we have tools like this is skill trial, trials that allow you to, to determine what is the kind of uh, tools that you need to learn and to, to learn them online basically easily. Uh, and that's something that of course is run also by the, by the visual studies uh, sequence. Uh, but this is crucial for us because we work with very complex information and, conf and conflicts and situations and realities. We want to make sure that we have that you have the you're equipped with the tools to represent them, to 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 discuss them, to to work with them, and also to produce new imaginarios, new images, new forms, new aesthetics for architecture. And this is again something that that is uh, we're very proud of. We have uh, among the AUD graduates some of the most important architects like Charles Renfro that is right here shaping in proximity to the shed, uh, you know, like so many important buildings that, that are bringing new imaginaries to what architecture can, can do and how it operates. And this, of course, a, a very large number of, of possibilities and you will, you will decide which ones you, you take. Uh, but this is our core and we also think that it's important to produce books we have a publishing house, uh, Columbia Books on Architecture and the City that is right here. And also we support students to produce publications and to launch them and to prepare them. We have writing workshops, we have events on writing. So writing is important for us, books, knowledge is important. And we also want for those of you that have an inclination and an interest in, in teaching in the future or you're already teaching, uh, you, you have teaching experience. We also have programs that allow for you to, to, to get the teaching experience uh, in Colombia, in GSAP, 
uh, and we offer TA ships uh, every semester. But also, uh, once you graduate, you are offered the possibility of of uh, teaching in the in the first semester of the of the incoming class. So you will be working with graduates from the program now in your studios, uh, who will be teaching assistants, and you will have the opportunity also to teach uh, in the future by applying to a, to an open call. And there's ten positions. It's normally, um, you know, either. In, at this moment or before, normally those that have the the interest on, on, of teaching, they, they get opportunities to, to do that. Of course, it's to open calls, it's not guaranteed, but I must say that in the past, those that wanted to do it, I, I believe that they, they got an opportunity to, to do it. All this I want to insist is intended to, to make sure that, that we render our discipline and design, architectural design, uh, a way uh, for for you basically to 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 move your sensitivities and to mobilize them to transform the world, let's say, and to to have a say in the in the in the future of humanity, ecosystems, societies, uh, and that also reflects on your the way that you relate to each other. Uh, the school has a large number of student groups that are very much. Uh, specialize on, on things that are important to our students. Uh, you probably will find one that or several that that are connected to your sensitivities, to your to your interests. But you can also do new ones. Every year we have new AD groups of you know, old school groups that are born and the school supports them financially. You can organize your, your lecture series, you can have guests, you can do publications and, and that happens all the time. And it's a great opportunity. For instance, a few years ago, a group of students launched the radio and, and that became a great opportunity for, for the class to be uh, gaining a new voice. I encourage you to look at the episodes. You can find them in, in, the, in our website, but it's, it's very, very, it's been a very, very fun uh, way for, for the class to, to work together. Of course, we're in New York, and this is crucial for us. New York is probably the, as many people have claimed, the most important laboratory for architecture uh, in the in the last centuries, uh, and it keeps being it. Each year is different. Each year, there's new things going on here, and we work with the city very intensively. We actually work as the city, I would say, because of course our faculty are important people in the city. They're connected to the firms, the laboratories, the authorities, the, the intergovernmental agencies, the museums, the cultural polygons, the artist groups, the underground networks. Uh, so by being here, you, you basically are in the city. And, and we also facilitate that once you graduate, you also uh, can continue being part of the city. The AD program is a STEM designated, uh, meaning that you you can apply to an OPT and allows and it allows you to work uh, in this in the city or or across the country. And and I mean, being New York, a place that has uh, the most important architectural agencies or the intergovernmental organizations like United Nations, so that has the the groups of of activism also proximity to many of the most important PhD programs. That's something that is very intensively used, like the possibility of staying here, preparing for, uh, or working for a, for a firm that you're excited about, or either independent or corporate or big or small, uh, working many people with NGOs, working for intergovernmental organizations, uh, but also preparing maybe getting a job that you're excited about while you prepare to apply for a PhD program uh, in, in an Ivy League uh, institution is also something that we do all the time. We have many, many of our students are, uh, I'm very proud to say that are very successful when applying to PhD programs uh, in, in uh, either in a school or in other schools. Uh, so here we are uh, in Avery Hall, uh, and where I hope to welcome you very soon.